put your hands together and join me in welcoming Gulpana. I also invite onto stage Mayank Lalpuria. Mayank is the marketing head of West and North of Phoenix Market City, uh, um, not just Mumbai but the Phoenix Group. And I have always admired the commitment and passion and vision with which Mayank drives the businesses of the mall and keeps it dynamically buzzing with initiative to make it one of Mumbai's favorite places to spend time in. Mayank Agul. Okay, I'm going to ask Mayank to say a few words and then you can uh, together unveil the power of Hi everyone, I think uh, thanks to Gitika for briefing about the entire campaign in such detail. So this is our 11th edition and uh, a very exciting campaign which we have been doing from last 11 years and very successful. So far we might have touched around more than 2 lakh women customers, patrons engaging with the campaign and uh, which is just growing year after year. So uh, and thank you Gul for you know, coming and helping us to Unveil the campaign. Thank you. Uh, I'm now going to request Mayank and Gul to please. Brother. So Gul, this uh, is being recorded for all the women entrepreneurs. You know Phoenix is doing this big break, which is an investment uh, initiative. And the idea is to support women entrepreneurs on their journey. So as someone who's been a woman entrepreneur, what is your, what is your advice to someone who's just starting their business? I think to have an unwavering faith uh, in yourself is really important. And faith in the idea that you are putting forward because I find a lot of the um, early entrepreneurs, women and men, tend to try and oversell their idea and that in turn ends up making them look uh, perhaps over keen to the investor or the potential client. So be self-assured, be confident and know that your idea is incredible and not and not feel the need to constantly over explain and seek external validation for that idea. That's a great tip. But knowing that what you know now, because you've done Moby Fit, you've done many things as an entrepreneur, you've also started up many things. Um, what would you do differently other than that one tip that you shared? Uh, what would you tell yourself or what would you tell someone who's just starting? Or, or in your own journey, how would you do it differently? I think I would say have less self-doubt. Uh, I read somewhere that hard-working people, uh, competent people are always entangled in self-doubt and far less competent people bash on regardless. I read that too. So, um, you know, I'm going to leverage, if I were to go back and, and going forward now, I would leverage every single access point that I have and be very confident about it and not try and keep refining the idea and waiting for it to be perfect. I would just go bash on regardless. This is true. Um, that was a very interesting article, I thought. Uh, very keen insight. So, uh, Gul, you know, one of the things that 
holds a lot of people back and in fact a lot of people women I speak to from starting on ideas and entrepreneurship is the whole uh, concept of income uncertainty. When you move from salary and having that regular income to going to a situation where you don't know how it's going to be. What would be your suggestion and way forward on that? I think again I read somewhere probably on Instagram that salary is a drug that you're hooked on to by, um, by your employers. And it is a drug. I mean, of course, the certainty of that paycheck at the end of the month and knowing that life will be uh, well. Uh, I didn't suffer from that simply because being in the entertainment industry and as a profession, my paycheck is never guaranteed. I'm constantly having the need to sell myself. In fact, as a, as a professional in the entertainment industry, I've used my energy to sell other people's products. Correct. And in the process also sell myself so that I'm considered worthy of selling their products. Uh, so I think the salary drug uh, analogy didn't really hold true for me, but I think it does hold true for my husband. He's very uh, always bitten by the idea that should I let go of my salary and, and chase my entrepreneurial dreams. And I just think that all of us are actually entrepreneurs at heart. When you didn't have your first job, you went out and gave it all you had, that's how you landed that first job. So the salary drug is something that you've got to wean yourself off. And if there is a way to scale back from being a salaried person to being maybe a consultant who does X number of days a month, and then that's one way of doing it. Right. And that's what they do in rehab as well. I don't think they take you off drugs <laughs> from stay from day one. Okay. It is um, good. It is disheartening to fail. And uh, we've heard of many entrepreneurs who have eventually been successful who failed several times. Um, and some people give up at that first uh, failure. What would be your uh, experience of that and your advice on that front? I think a lot of the really successful entrepreneurs that we hear about have a long string of failures behind them, including the most well-known story now being made into a film with um, my, I don't remember who, uh, the McDonald's story, right? Oh, who's in it? But, uh, but, uh, it's this actor I really like a lot, who used to be Batman before. Uh, it's not coming Anyone in you. the audience know who the star is? We give you points for that. Maybe one of someone can Google it. Uh, so I mean, he plays. He does a great job of playing, uh, playing. You know, the, the founder. But also because uh, the story was already out there. Similarly, a lot of people that you that you know today as very successful entrepreneurs, first generation entrepreneurs, have had a lot of failure. The ones who probably hit it successful from the first lot are the IIMIT types because they had the access. They were in and out of management consulting rooms, uh, they had access to consulting firms and they were able to convince VCs a lot better than maybe the first time entrepreneur who doesn't quite know how to pitch to a VC, how to pitch to a, an investor and again, they constantly keep underestimating their idea and keep trying to refine it whereas people with half-baked ideas go ahead and go to market with them. So I think the one big learning is that everybody has failures behind them. Two, that every failure, and I cannot stress this enough, is an opportunity to learn how to do things better. And in entrepreneurship, there is really no failure, it's only a learning. They say um, you either win or you learn. It's not losing necessarily. Yes, that's a great point. Um, in this day and age, going where we're talking so much about financial independence for women and the importance of that, what would be your advice for women specifically as they start with on an entrepreneurial journey? Well, I think women uh, entrepreneurs are getting a lot of uh, support from the ecosystem today. There are uh, there are VC funds that are specifically looking out for women entrepreneurs. There is uh, the the Thai the, the Indus Valley Entrepreneur um, Incubator, which seeks out women entrepreneurs. And uh, I feel a, at a at a raising money level, women entrepreneurs have uh, have it have it probably better than they've had for a long time and in some ways I feel women entrepreneurs also have an advantage because they're able to sell their product a lot better by leveraging social media. Not to say that men can't do that, a lot of men have successfully leveraged social media to set up their businesses. So influencers quote unquote and opinion makers have used social media to, um, to sort of catapult their small fledgling businesses into bigger things. 
and I think women can also do that very well because a man making a spiel is a man making a spiel. A woman making a spiel is likely to be her. And that is the way social media metric is is designed for now, of course, before it changes again. So to summarize, I think the ecosystem is inherently supporting women, uh, maybe for its own end. Maybe to tick the diversity and inclusivity box. But women entrepreneurs have it um, have it have it better than they've ever had before in terms of the ecosystem that's supporting them. And I also think the overall acceptance of women as uh, as, as entrepreneurs, now that we're in our second and third generation of entrepreneurial women, is is gaining a lot of ground. Last but not least, a lot of established women entrepreneurs are going above and beyond to enable an ecosystem which empowers other women who are seeking the entrepreneurial dream. You know, uh, I think that's great. Those are very clear tips. But there was this one article recently about Bill Gates talking about how his daughter would only marry a rich man. And then he went on to explain how rich is about attitude and poor is also about attitude. And if you have an attitude towards wealth making, you will take every experience that comes your way to increase your wealth. Whereas if you have a poor attitude, even if you get a lot of wealth, like you will lose it. In fact, he gave the example of many lottery winners who win a lot of money, but because they have a poor attitude, they soon broke again. And so when he said his daughter would marry a rich person, it was about attitude. What are the seven facts in, in attitude that would help someone become rich? What are the things they can approach? So I think it's a feeling of I have enough which is the starting point, that I have enough to start a business, I have enough to last out a year without a job, I have enough to take care of my family, I have enough to take care of all the needs I have. That is the starting point and that number is a variable. Uh, in my head, I've always felt I've had enough and more. From when I was in college on a very, very small pocket money, I mean, very grateful for that in hindsight. I don't think I put myself in a pocket money that he hasn't earned. Uh, but I remember saying, you know, I could save up for three months and I have so much. So I, I think the starting point is knowing you have enough. If Those you start mindset. with a point, mindset of lack, you will translate that sense of lack into every aspect of economic decision making. So not just in your household decision making, in your purchase decisions, in your um, in your in your entrepreneurial decisions. So you don't need like a, a five crore seed fund or a five crore investment from my angel to start your business. It can start literally out of what you have saved up. So I have enough and fill the blanks after that. I have enough to pursue the life that I want to pursue. I have enough to pursue uh, my entrepreneurial dream. I have enough to travel the world. I have enough to buy all that I want. The starting point of economic independence is that idea. Because you can have all of that. I mean, I know people who make a lot more money than I do and they never have enough because the attitude of being poor, I mean, I would call it the attitude of lack. It's like, oh, I don't have enough. When I've saved this much, then I'll set up my firm. Or when I've done this, then I'll register my company. The thing is, a lot of people wait to reach a certain milestone before they embark on a, another, another journey. To get married, to have children. You have to start with an attitude I, of I have enough. Blank, blank, blank. So you're also a big fitness icon and we all admire that, but how do you, how does that play into your entrepreneurship? I think, um, I mean the dress that I'm wearing right now is about 10 years old. I don't buy dresses because they hang in my closet. I just buy ridiculously expensive shoes and bags and then just team them with 10, 15 year old dresses. And that's because they continue to fit, so I save money on my clothes. Secondly, I think somebody who's fit carries a certain aura about them when they enter anywhere. Whether it's a business meeting or it's, a, it's anything. And that aura translates into a sense of confidence, which is very difficult to match no matter how wealthy you are, no matter how expensive your Kanali or Xenia or Dior suit is. A fit body is the greatest status symbol. So when you're fit, you have a status that you're flaunting that money can't buy. And that really, I mean, over the years, I've, I've really leveraged that, that, that example. 
uh, and that impact on people. But what it does for me personally, internally, is that it gives me a sense of self-confidence, it gives me a sense of knowing that I'm living the fullest potential because of the time that I invest in my fitness regimen, Gitika, I feel that it pays me back 2x, 3x in terms of productivity. Otherwise, you know, I find when I'm less charged, uh, I'm able to do less. The 25, 30 minutes I take out to pursue a fitness regimen comes back to me 3x in heightened productivity. Yeah, I've heard you say this many times over the year and I've seen it in action with all the many things you do at one go, which I don't think I don't think I know anyone who's doing so many different things at such a high level um, across. So it's very, very admirable and it's very inspiring. It's a very inspiring example for all of us here. Um, Gul, I think that's uh, one thing I would like to say is I know you've been to Phoenix before with us. It is the biggest mall there is uh, in the country. And it has, we have 600 brands of clothes and high street uh, shops and uh, we also have a lot of food and great shows. Uh, tell us a little about your experience with you. I was trying to remember the last time I was here and actually it was for the Power Woman uh, 2020, 20, shortly before the whole world shut down. Uh, I had the opportunity to be here as part of Power Woman 2020 campaign kick off uh, around Women's Day. And, uh, you know, I've always been very, very impressed by A, the quality, B, the category of the, the retail available here, and B, the effort that the promoters made in making the mall a desirable destination. In fact, I was coming in and I spotted a shop that I wanted to go to, and uh, I'm going to go pick up some stuff from there, because I've just not had the uh, time to go to a mall in the last few weeks, and I do want to go pick up some mascara. Yeah, well, I, I will join you on that shopping trip. And we also have a lot of stuff for people like Nehal. So we're looking forward to showing back to him as well. We are very, we are very happy to have you, Ihagul. And we are very happy to have Nehal. So thank you. Thank you, Gitika, for making <laughs> so much of me. Every time, I really appreciate it. I think um, it's always wonderful to talk to you. The ease with which you and I communicate is, uh, is one of my great achievements in life. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we will open it up to questions from the audience, if any. Um, I'm just going to pass my mic. We'll sit. It's just two moments. Huh? Just... Thank you. 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 So I would like to ask you in your day to day life what are, the, what are some things uh, you do without fail uh, to further this particular cause? I think gender equality is a cause that would remain uh, every conscious woman's cause for the foreseeable future. Uh, for me, the one thing that I practice on a day in day out basis is how I'm embedding the idea of gender in my son Nihal's mind. I, I try and make sure that at any given point of time, I am not succumbing to gender stereotypification. As women who have sons, we really have a very, very big responsibility because, and, I mean, and also women who have daughters, because if you raise your daughters to be princesses, to have that amazing wedding, to be rescued by that knight in shining armor, she's not going to become a CEO. She's not going to become an entrepreneur. She's going to look for a CEO and an entrepreneur to marry. So I think the way uh, the way we raise our daughters is very, very important, but also the way we raise our sons. And I'm really conscious of making sure that A, that my son sees me going out there and slaying all the time. He needs to see his mother as a warrior because that's how he should see all women. And B, I try and make sure that I limit and minimize any gender stereotypification uh, as far as my son's concerned, and I'm sure uh, Nihal does that too. I mean, Kitika does that too. Okay, one more question. Um, we know you are awaiting the release of your new film, uh, Kapil Sharma's Star uh, Starro. So, could you uh, please tell me a little about that movie? Well, it is a Kapil Sharma and Shahana Goswami Starro. I'm a very small part of it. Uh, uh, and I'm very grateful to Applause and Nandita who made me part of this. I think it's the quintessential take on the e-commerce industry. 
I think the take will leave you thinking like all of Nandita's films. It will leave you thinking about all the incredible changes that have come into our lives through e-commerce, through Amazon and Flipkart and uh, Uber Eats and Ola and, and Zomato and maybe even provoke you to think about the people who are enabling that comfort and that really is what Zwigato is about. It's a commentary on the enablers of the e-commerce world that we enjoy. Nehal, would you like to come on stage now? You said you wanted to. Come. Okay, come and sit here. I'm going to go sit now. You want to be on stage with the county. Well, you've been incredible as always. Thank you so much. First, um, What have you enjoyed so far? You, you have to talk into the mic. I know everything that I say difficult words and no one can say these words. I think that's important to have that uh, vocabulary and to be able to articulate these things. Phoenix is a great place for kids and we're going to show you some of the fun things that are happening around here. Will you want me to take you around? Yeah? You'll allow me? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to go have some of those delicious foods, try out time zone a bit, maybe do some bumper cars, which I am personally dying to do. And um, should we also try the, this flight simulation? You like it? Papa's a Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we're clear what we're doing. Our plan is set. And we've had great guests today, both Gul and Nehal. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for being here and uh, we hope you enjoy the Power Over Fiesta. Yes, yes, of course. But make me frame the color. ये जो फिनिक्स मार्केट सिटी कोल्ला का वुमेन्स मंथ इनिशिएटिव है इसका मैं दूसरी बार समर्थन कर रही हूँ मैं इससे पहले भी यहाँ आई हूँ और मुझे लगता है कि जब रिटेल इंडस्ट्री आपको एक बार रिमाइंड करती है कि एक्चुअली हर दिन महिला दिवस होना चाहिए हर महीना महिला दिवस होना चाहिए उसी में असली सशक्तिकरण है और यहाँ पर वुमेन ऑन्ट्रप्रनर्स को इनेबल करने के लिए जो वर्कशॉप की गई और जिसके ज़रिए वुमेन ऑन्ट्रप्रनर्स अपने प्रपोजल्स और आइडियाज़ पिच कर सकते हैं जिनके बेसिस पे उन्हें फंडिंग की एक्सेस मिल सकती है मैं मानती हूँ ये बहुत ही बढ़िया इनिशिएटिव है और मैं इसे पूरी तरह से सपोर्ट करती हूँ मुझे लगता है as a as an actor and as a as a woman who is part of the entertainment industry मुझे लगता है कि महिलाओं को उनका दर्जा मिल रहा है कोई प्राप्ति नहीं मिल रही है जो बहुत पहले होना चाहिए था वो अब हो रहा है किसी भी समाज में अगर देखा जाए तो महिलाओं की बराबर की हिस्सेदारी होनी चाहिए बराबर की भागीदारी होनी चाहिए और अगर वो अब देखने को मिल रही है वो प्राप्ति नहीं है वो हक है जो महिलाओं को मिल रहा है और अच्छी बात है ये हो रहा है और मुझे आशा है कि आने वाले समय में भी ऐसा होता रहेगा ऐसा 
आई थिंक वही मंत्र जो सबका होता है फिटनेस को लेकर सोच समझिए खाना पीना खाओ एक्सरसाइज करो और बाकी सब हो जाता है अपने आप आई एम लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू पाता लोक सीजन टू एंड वेरी स्मॉल पार्ट इन कपिल शर्मा इज विगार्ट विच आई एम लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू थैंक यू आप इधर आइए सर नेक्स्ट एंड स्पीक लाउडर all of us who have a platform in some way or the other use that platform i believe uh, even those who don't have access to the public the way we are privileged to have do use their access in whatever way they have to put across things that they are passionate about when people have a public platform which gives them access to others thanks to networks who want to hear what we have to say i feel it gives you an additional responsibility to say what you want and if some people call that activism then activism it is the way i see it you're just speaking up for what you believe in and that is that is who you are and um, when among the numerous things that you're speaking about when you participate in the I think Phoenix Market City Kerala has done an amazing campaign by creating this platform, which allows uh, women entrepreneurs to pitch their ideas and products. And if one, um, they could they could go to a venture capitalist who would fund their idea and product. And I think that's a great enabler. Uh, I feel the kind of access that people who are behind Market um, City Kerala have, they could enable in return a very very robust ecosystem. for women entrepreneurs and that's an incredible responsibility that they're fulfilling ha pa okay yeah 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 uh, i think power women booklet that phoenix market city kurla has come out with again uh, and they've been doing this for several years now is an incredible initiative i think women are economically empowered and they should have the means to work hard and and spend their money when they want to thank you
I'm just going to show you. But I want to sit in and take like a look something. I'm like feeling like a downer. I just lost a bunch of people. Yeah, it goes away. I'm going to sit here. Leave me to bed. What are you playing? I'm going to have a look.